Next, my testimony. I was born and raised in Dayton, Ohio. Any Ohioans? Yes. My brother, his last name is Stewart as well, too. <laughs> Um, it's so funny, you know, you've heard the term PK, preacher's kid. Well, I was a PN, preacher's niece. Born and raised in Reverend Tommy L. Stewart's church, my uncle, St. Timothy Missionary Baptist Church, and he has been pastoring for 42 years. He's still pastoring today in, in Dayton. So I grew up in the church, grew up in a Christian household, have a, a younger brother, and our parents always expressed the importance of higher education. So when it was time to go to college, I actually went out to UC Berkeley to do my undergrad, zigzagged across the country to Atlanta, did my master's program at Clark Atlanta University, and then went further south uh, later and got my doctorate at Nova Southeastern University in Fort Lauderdale. So I grew up in a household where the philosophy at the time was go to school to get a good job. So my plan was to do that get with corporate America. I've been very blessed to work with some wonderful organizations. Bell South Corporation, the Coca-Cola Company, Hostess Brands, you know, really great organizations. And it was actually during my tenure with the Coca-Cola Company that I started feeling a calling to write a book, a book to help business leaders connect their business plans with their purpose. And so at the time, I was managing Coke's partnership with Burger King Corporation. And I was traveling all over the country. And so the only time I had to work on the manuscript was on the weekend. So on the weekend, I'd take my laptop to Starbucks or work at home. And I'm telling you, after a few weeks, it was pure joy. I actually got to the point where I was living for the weekend so I could work on my book. Nothing but a calling, divine calling. So at the time, I was on a fast track program with Coca-Cola. So they'd relocate me to LA for a couple years to learn bottling operations, and then back to Atlanta to be exposed to the food service division and the retail division. And uh, I was having a conversation um, one particular day with my mentor, and he said, you know, the next logical assignment for you is an international role. Here was the epiphany for Shalette. I was open to taking the international role because I thought it might give me more time to work on my book. <laughs> I was like, you know what? That's ludicrous. It's not fair to the company. It's not fair to me. I needed to honor the calling. And so I did. I resigned, took a two-year sabbatical, self-funded my sabbatical, finished the manuscript, got an agent, completed everything in the fall of 2008. Anybody remember what the economy was like in the fall of 2008? <laughs> Wall Street, it was like a new low every hour. Remember that? Housing market, Bernie Madoff, ridiculous. I am convinced it was the worst time in the history of mankind to try to sell a book to anybody. So I said, you know what now, Lord? Because I knew he had ordained for me to do this. I knew it was a calling. I said, whatever you want. If you want me to go back to corporate America, I'll do that. If you want me to change industries, I'll do that. And so at the time, a lot of my family members had migrated to Dallas. I was still living in Atlanta. And I was spending all my, my holidays in Dallas and enjoyed it. And it was open to moving here. So the only opportunity, wouldn't you know it, that opened up was in Dallas. At the time, I thought, oh, this is nice to be closer to family and all. But in retrospect, now I see it was not so much the family. This is a strong Christian market, perfect for the platform God was giving me. I couldn't see it at the time, but now I have an appreciation for what he was doing. So Hostess Brands had recently relocated their corporate headquarters from Kansas City to Irving, right here in the Dallas area. So they relocated me in, got there, great company, wonderful group of people. After a few months, though, I started feeling the best way I can describe it is suffocated. Like somehow I was living below my potential, boxed in. Somehow I'd gotten out of alignment with God's plan. And I struggled with that, quite frankly, because I said, Lord, I know that you opened the door for me at Hostess. You know, and these people created a leadership role for me. You know, so my plan was to stay at least two years, ride out the economy, you know, revisit the book opportunity then. It got progressively worse. It was almost as if the Lord was saying, look, this was the vehicle to get you here. Now it's time for you to step out and do what I ordained for you to do. So finally I said, okay, I'll be obedient. 
good economy or bad economy, I will resign. Publisher for my book or no publisher, I will resign. And so I did. Three months after I resigned, I had four publishing contracts on my book. Nothing but God. And God divinely connected me with the consultants, the professionals, the individuals to help me get my business up and running. So today, the book, Revelations in Business, Connecting Your Business Plans with God's Plan and Purpose for Your Life, will be released later this year. And I've launched Stewart Consulting, LLC, thank you, um, which is a leadership development and business consulting firm. And our corporate mission is to help business leaders connect their business plan with their purpose their career with their calling so that they excel personally and professionally. And it is such a joy. It really is you know, to be in alignment with his plan. So I commend each and every one of you because I always say we don't have a personal life and a professional life. We have one life and we have to make that life count. So I commend each and every one of you because you are truly making your lives count. <coughs> Especially as I sit in on your conference it's been such a blessing to learn more about your organization, you know, the mission and vision. And I don't know if you all take the time to really do this or not, you know, in terms of contemplating this, but you truly are leaving a lasting, positive legacy. It's not just about you and your families. I mean, you really are impacting generations, you know, in a positive way, too. So don't take that lightly. You really are making world changes, okay? So what I'd like to do is provide you with a few insights, tools, suggestions to help you further the excellent initiatives you already have in place, okay? All right, a few photos, my uh, doctoral graduation photo. This lady is my mom. She will be 71 next month. Yeah, she look great. This is a former client of mine, Marie Osmond. When I managed uh, Coke's partnership with four strategic nonprofit partners, her organization was one of them, Children's Miracle Network. Wonderful organization. They support the children's hospitals locally. This gentleman here, you can barely see him, is Magic Johnson and his lovely wife, Cookie. Magic uh, and Cookie were clients of mine as well because when I managed Coke's partnership with Burger King Corporation, Magic owns a number of Burger Kings. So he's also a Burger King franchisee. And this young man here is Stevan Stewart, my nephew, and he's the first grandchild in the family, so we're spoiling him. And this is an island off the coast of uh, Greece, it's Corfu, and it's just one of my favorite photos. I took that back in 89 when I was studying business in Europe, and I just love that because it combines two of my favorite things, the house of God and then the ocean. Love that, a chapel in the middle of the ocean. So just a little bit about Shalette. 